Hello and welcome to AW.1, the AW Women's Division blog. My name is Travis. You can read more of our articles at AW.1. Hit me up on Twitter at AW underscore one. That's O-N-E. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. It makes us feel too sweet. All right, let's get into it. We're doing something of a audio version of one of the articles up on aw.1 about queen amanetta this youtube video will have minimal visuals so just treat it like a podcast and i'd love to hear your feedback about how you like this if you'd like more visuals in the future but for now just for getting it out there it's just going to have the same screen pretty much the whole time so when I first put out this graphic and put up Queen Regnant, uh, I had a couple of people say, I thought that said Queen Pregnant, which would be quite the scoop uh, for me to get. But no, it's Queen Regnant. We're more familiar with the term Queen Consort or Queen Regent. Well, Queen Regnant is a female monarch reigning in her own right. And I thought that was kind of the proper tone to get off to talking about Queen Amanada's incredible month, almost literally exactly 30 days. And we'll start with her first match back. During a period for the division where debuts and returns are being both speculated on and realized at a rampant pace, and current acts are reaching new heights such as Timeless Tony Storm, Julia Hart and Sky Blue, I wasn't really expecting, nor looking for, anyone to have a breakout performance. But in her comeback, after nearly 10 months, Queen Amanada has strung together a series of increasingly undeniable performances that, all knew, although I knew um, she was a, a, a hot prospect, and I even, in an article, you know, a, a year or two ago, said she would, have been, she would have been my number one pick for... AEW to, to bring in, uh, she even blew my socks off. So I just wanted to encapsulate this incredible run because it should be appreciated and should be encouraging if you are a fan of hers. So the last time we had seen Amanetta was on a dark taping, if you remember those, in Universal Studio. It was a hard-hitting affair between her and her real-life BFF, Sky Blue. So when she returned against Sky Blue on a taped episode of Rampage, this scanned as something of strategic by Tony Khan. She didn't get nearly as much offense in uh, on this night, but it's a different venue and Sky is at a very different place as a pushed act in AEW, but it all went well enough. Chronologically, Queen fought Maya World, who's something of a revelation herself, in Ring of Honor. I would keep an eye out for Maya World. Just as a note, for someone who has only been wrestling like a year, she looks outstanding. This was a super enjoyable four minute sprint with lots of action. Maya World got lots of shine, but ultimately the match told the story of Amanada's victory feeling inevitable. This felt like a pretty big deal, as the match graphic was simply Queen Amanada in action, which is typically something that's only done for signed talent. And I take it this must have passed the sniff test for Sean Ross Sapp as well, because soon enough he had sought out and was able to confirm that indeed Queen Amanada was all elite, that she had been signed by AW. Always taking things in stride, I took the opportunity to take a little victory lap on Twitter. The night before the taped match against Maya World aired, Queen Amanada shared her Dynamite debut with Mariah May, who had her AEW debut. I'll be honest, I figured this would be a squash match, but in actuality, this was a stiff, striking, back-and-forth battle where the offense was pretty 50-50. I was encouraged by the fact that Tony Khan must have a great deal of trust in Amanada to have her work with Mariah May, since Mariah May is someone that they made a big deal about coming into the company, and she needed to have a great breakout performance in her debut. 
Instead, we actually got two Breiko performances. And then we got Queen Amanada versus Hakiro Shida, the ace of AW, on the homecoming edition of Rampage. If you love strong style or you just like lumberjack contests, this was the match for you because Shida and Amanada looked determined to chop each other's torsos in half with kicks to each other's backs. This match had, as those of us in the hockey community like to say, plenty of snot and snarl. Truly, this was the spike of adrenaline that I didn't need that close to bedtime. Amanetta had had some fun multi-women matches on Ring of Honor, but in her next match on Rampage, she took on Chris Stack Statlander in a star-making performance. This was probably the match where I put together how much of a powerhouse Amanetta actually is. If she can stand nose-to-nose and -nose credibly go strike for strike with the Bionic Statlander, she's a legitimate powerhouse in the division. There were points in this match where I just had to shake my head at how violent some of these moves looked. Queen Amanada's hip attack, followed by a running boot in the corner, is currently living in my head rent-free. And this run with Queen Amanada kind of came back full circle. It was December 22nd, where Queen Amanada made her return in a booking decision that felt like Tony Khan wanted to ease her back in when she took on Sky Blue. Well, just one month later, on January 20th, it was Queen Amanada's capable hands being entrusted with the singles return of one of the matriarchs of the division, Thunder Rosa, who hadn't had a wrestled a singles match in over a year. I give full credit to Thunder Rosa, who I think we were all prepared to be, you know, a bit charitable with. But she looked closer to the old Thunder Rosa than I was anticipating. And having her eat a healthy serving of Queen Amanada's hard-hitting offense for over nine minutes went a long way in assuring me that, indeed, Thunder Rosa is healthy and definitely does not need to be treated with kid gloves. But this match led me to think that Tony Khan might need to step carefully. See, one of my favorite moments in AEW was in the semifinals of the first Owen Hart tournament, Ruby Soho versus Chris Statlander. In a match where Ruby was essentially signposted to go, face, to go on to face Britt Baker, Statlander was su just such an undeniable ass kicker that the crowd had gotten 100% behind her. It was one of those lightning in a bottle moments that wrestling occasionally offers. If not for Thunder Rosa being akin to a beloved folk hero in AEW, I was getting hints of that Statlander type of moment, possibly bubbling under the surface. AW crowds love powerhouses who hit hard. Combine that with Queen Amanada's innate cool factor, and I think Tony should think carefully about who he books her against next on Dynamite, Collision, or Rampage. If you pit her against another babyface, it feels imminently like Queen is going to turn that crowd. As I say this, well after the time of publishing this article, Queen Amanada is due to face Will Nightingale, who is the baby faciest baby face that ever lived. So maybe this is Tony Khan testing the waters? I would hope so anyway. I see big things for Queen Amanada. The only thing I don't know is, is she gonna be a staple of Ring of Honor and kind of dominate that, sort of like in the way Athena did? Or will she be a mainstay on the AW main roster? You can let me know what you think in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter at AEW underscore O-N-E. Thanks for watching and as always, remember to let the women in your life know how much you appreciate them.